PH, enabling digital opportunities for Filipinos. Next Wave Cities Baguio City is one of the prime locations for IT BPM industry with its constant recognition as one of the top 10 next wave cities in the Philippines since 2011 and one of the top 100 outsourcing destinations globally as recognized by Tholons, the leading strategic advisory firm for global outsourcing research. My name is, is Michael Oliver de la Pena. I'm the Vice President for Operations for Cytel's North Luzon region. I've been working for Cytel for going on 12 years now. I started out in, in 2004 as an agent for the very first account. As I moved through coach track training, then became a coach, operations manager uh, track training, then I became a manager, all the way to where I am now. Back in 2003, going into 2004, when I started with the company, our plans were to, to migrate to, to the U.S. So my sister-in-law has a nursing home there. But I've always said I wanted my, my kids to grow up in the same city where I grew up in. Saitel, this company has given me the opportunity to do just that. Knowing that for every one BPO employee uh, uh, or associate, that there are seven others, uh, either family or friends, that are helped by that, is even more rewarding than the physical or, or material stuff. The Next Wave Cities program focuses on the creation and development of ICT hubs which will serve as business and innovation centers and investment destinations outside Metro Manila, thus creating economic opportunities in these areas. Stepping up the value chain The developments in the game industry evidently shows the growing wider appreciation and interest of students and professionals in games development. I took game design and development in abroad. It's in Full Sail University. After I graduated, it was quite hard for me to get a job. Shortly after that, I went back home to the Philippines. So I worked as a contract engineer for a group of companies. Shortly after that, I dedicated some of those time to teach game design and development in our local university here. As a role model, having the opportunity of getting educated from these schools that focuses on game design and development, what I can do is share my knowledge, continue teaching these uh, next generation of people who will be driving our economy here in the Philippines. If they could take advantage of those computer skills, they could apply it to their work, bring in more dollars, basically, to the uh, Philippines, our country. The Stepping Up the Value Chain initiative aims to develop the higher value and more complex services capabilities that the country's IT BPM segments could offer. These segments are information technology, healthcare information management, software development, finance and accounting, animation and games development. Seed PH Seed PH involves activities to develop startup ideas, skills and mindset as it conducts different activities to orient the youth on the opportunities to position Philippines as a leading digital economy. I'm French Maverick Lorilla. I'm from Davao City. I just graduated from the University of Southeastern Philippines, taking Bachelor of Science in Electronics Engineering. Right now, we're building a startup called Cloud Farm Innovations. Cloud Farm Innovation is a company that aims to help our Filipino farmers to simplify their lives in agriculture through technology. We see potential in agriculture and that is why we put our interests, our skills and talent to do such a thing that could help farmers to maximize their yield. Right now our company is developing a product which is a smart IoT sensor and app that allows farmers to maximize their yield through advanced monitoring and analytics of the crop condition. What inspires us to make this startup is we all came from family of farmers and we see a lot of opportunity in agriculture and there's a lot of problems needed to be solved. That is why we build this technology that will help 
farmers make a smarter decision in farming by giving them the information that they need through the use of an app and a device that is put on the farm. CPH promotes digital entrepreneurship and advocates the development of the country's startup ecosystem by unifying its players and stakeholders towards the community's common goals. Rural Impact Sourcing RIS program also involves training and development of talents in the countryside to enable them to provide IT BPM services while working from home. I am Helene Baterna from Kabatagan Lano del Norte, an online worker. I started online work in the year 2007. I po ako for college sa Iligan Institute of Technology. Po. Yung papa ko po, farmer po siya. Yun po bung buhay sa amin. Natuto akong mag-ani po na palay, tapos magtanim din. Tumutulong sa paglagay ng mga similya po ng palay po. Uso pa yun yung Friendster. Yun lang yung pinaka malakas na social media site noon. So dun po nagsimula ang lahat. Isa pong employer ang gustong mag-hire sa akin. I started as a data entry personnel for pnworldwide.com. Yung salary ko po noon is 16,000 po pesos. Malaking tulong po yun sa pamilya ko kasi pag pagbibigay ako ng pera sa mama ko, sa papa, para din sa palaya namin. Now, I am the owner of Kapatagan Web Services. Pwede palang gawin dito sa rural with the help sa inyong program po. Kaya yun, nagpusigi po kami with the help of our mayor na ipuso mag magkaroon ng homegrown BPO dito. Yung mainly in-offer po namin is web developing, social media marketing, uh, lead generation, search engine optimization, both on-page and off-page. Gumagawa rin po kami ng plug-in developing po ngayon. Meron na po akong natulungan ng mga local online worker dito sa kapatagan po. Train po sila para maging social media marketer as a start and then naging search engine optimizer din po sila by my guidance po. Yung basic skills po na kailangan magsimula sa online work is meron kang social media presence sa iyong sarili, knowledge in computer, and tech savvy, and also an internet researcher. At least po, high school graduate po. Pwede na po siya. Marami po kaming mga kliyente. Kami po ang nagmamarket ng mga services nila. Malaki po na itulong itong online work na rural impact sourcing. Dito sa Kapatagan, malit lang po yung wage o salary. Yung sa online work po, malaki po siya. It's range 8,000 to 50,000 po. Malaki po itong tulong sa isang tao o sa isang worker na nandito lang sa Kapatagan po. Rural Impact Sourcing or RIS aims to promote ICT-enabled jobs as a high-value economic activity in rural communities. To be able to make a difference in, in people's lives through the industry and through this company is just invaluable. Iba talaga yung effect ng ICT, not just only in communication, but also in employment and even entrepreneurship. The most important thing is you must have passion for what you do. If you're doing something that you're not happy with, then there's no really point in continuing. Second is determination. Just keep on doing what you need to do, guys. So just keep on moving. Do the hard work. Keep doing what is right and what you love. When it comes to online work, it needs dedication and a proper exercise of attitude. My name is, is Michael Oliver de la Pena. I'm the Vice President for Operations for Cytel's North Luzon region. I am Brent Shua from Bacolod City, a game developer, startup founder, and a technopreneur. I am Franch Maverick Lorilla. I'm from Davao City, and I am a startup founder. I am Nilin Baterna from Kapatagan Lanao del Norte. I was an online freelancer, and now I am a digital entrepreneur. Wherever you are, in the Philippines, there is an opportunity waiting for you. Next Wave Cities. Stepping up the value chain. 
CDH Rural Impact Sourcing and the Department of Information and Communications Technology continues to strive to build more bridges, generate better options, and connect you to the endless possibilities in the world of ICT. Digital PH Digital opportunities for everyone. Digital PH, enabling digital opportunities for Filipinos. Next Wave Cities. Baguio City is one of the prime locations for IT BPM industry with its constant recognition as one of the top 10 next wave cities in the Philippines since 2011 and one of the top 100 outsourcing destinations globally as recognized by Tholons, the leading strategic advisory firm for global outsourcing research. My name is, is Michael Oliver de la Pena. I'm the Vice President for Operations for Cytel's North Luzon region. I've been working for Cytel for going on 12 years now. I started out in, in 2004 as an agent for the very first account. As I moved through coach track training and became a coach, operations manager uh, track training, then I became a manager, all the way to where I am now. Back in 2003, going into 2004 when I started with the company, our plans were to, to migrate to, to the U.S. My sister-in-law has a nursing home there. But I've always said I wanted my, my kids to grow up in the same city where I grew up in. Saitel, this company has given me the opportunity to do just that. Knowing that for every one BPO employee uh, uh, or associate, that there are seven others, uh, either family or friends, that are helped by that, is even more rewarding than the physical or, or material stuff. The Next Wave Cities program focuses on the creation and development of ICT hubs which will serve as business and innovation centers and investment destinations outside Metro Manila, thus creating economic opportunities in these areas. Stepping up the value chain The developments in the game industry evidently shows the growing wider appreciation and interest of students and professionals in games development. I took game design and development in abroad. It's in Full Sail University. After I graduated, it was quite hard for me to get a job. Shortly after that, I went back home to the Philippines. So I worked as a contract engineer for a group of companies. Shortly after that, I dedicated some of those time to teach game design and development in our local university here. As a role model, having the opportunity of getting educated from these schools that focuses on game design and development, what I can do is share my knowledge, continue teaching these uh, next generation of people who will be driving our economy here in the Philippines. If they could take advantage of those computer skills, they could apply it to their work, bring in more dollars, basically, to the uh, Philippines, our country. The Stepping Up the Value Chain initiative aims to develop the higher value and more complex services capabilities that the country's IT BPM segments could offer. These segments are information technology, healthcare information management, software development, finance and accounting, animation and games development. CPH CPH involves activities to develop startup ideas, skills and mindset as it conducts different activities to orient the youth on the opportunities to position Philippines as a leading digital economy. I'm French Maverick Lorilia. I'm from Davao City. I just graduated from the University of Southeastern Philippines, taking Bachelor of Science in Electronics Engineering. Right now, we're building a startup called Cloud Farm Innovations. Cloud Farm Innovation is a company that aims to 
help our Filipino farmers to simplify their lives in agriculture through technology. We see potential in agriculture and that is why we put our interest, our skills and talent to do such a thing that could help farmers to maximize their yield. Right now, our company is developing a product which is a smart IoT sensor and app that allows farmers to maximize their yield through advanced monitoring and analytics of the crop condition. What inspires us to make this startup is we all came from family of farmers and we see a lot of opportunity in agriculture and there's a lot of problems needed to be solved. That is why we built this technology that will help farmers make a smarter decision in farming by giving them the information that they need through the use of an app and a device that is put on the farm. CPH promotes digital entrepreneurship and advocates the development of the country's startup ecosystem by unifying its players and stakeholders towards the community's common goals. Rural Impact Sourcing RIS program also involves training and development of talents in the countryside to enable them to provide IT BPM services while working from home. I am Helen Baterna from Kabatagan Lano del Norte, an online worker. I started online work in the year 2007. I enrolled for college sa Iligan Institute of Technology. Po. Yung papa ko po, farmer po siya. Yun po bumubuhay sa amin. Natuto akong mag-ani po na palay, tapos magtanim din. Tumutulong sa paglagay ng mga similya po ng palay po. Uso pa yun yung Friendster. Yun lang yung pinakamalakas na social media site noon. So, dun po nagsimula ang lahat. Isa pong employer ang gustong mag-hire sa akin. I started as a data entry personnel for pnworldwide.com. Yung salary ko po noon is 16,000 po pesos. Malaking tulong po yun sa pamilya ko kasi pagbibigay ako ng pera sa mama ko, sa papa, para rin sa palaya namin. Now, I am the owner of Kapatagan Web Services. Pwede palang gawin dito sa rural with the help sa inyong program po. Kaya yun, nagpusigi po kami with the help of our mayor na ipuso mag magkaroon ng homegrown BPO dito. Yung mainly in-offer po namin is web developing, social media marketing, uh, lead generation, search engine optimization, both on-page and off-page. Gumagawa rin po kami ng plug-in developing po ngayon. Meron na po akong natulungan ng mga local online worker dito sa kapatagan po. Train po sila para maging social media marketer as a start and then naging search engine optimizer din po sila by my guidance po. Yung basic skills po na kailangan magsimula sa online work is meron kang social media presence sa yung sarili, knowledge in computer, and tech savvy, and also an internet researcher. At least po, high school graduate po. Pwede na po siya. Marami po kaming mga kliyente. Kami po ang nagmamarket ng mga services nila. Malaki po na itulong itong online work na rural impact sourcing. Dito sa Kapatagan, malit lang po yung wage o salary. Yung sa online work po, malaki po siya. It's range 8,000 to 50,000 po. Malaki po itong tulong sa isang tao o sa isang worker na nandito lang sa Kapatagan po. Rural Impact Sourcing or RIS aims to promote ICT-enabled jobs as a high-value economic activity in rural communities. To be able to make a difference in, in people's lives through the industry and through this company is just invaluable. Iba talaga yung effect ng ICT, not just only in communication, but also in employment and even entrepreneurship. The most important thing is you must have passion for what you do. If you're doing something that you're not happy with, then there's no really point in continuing. Second is determination. Just keep on doing what you need to do, guys. So just keep on moving. Do the hard work. Keep doing what is right and what you love. When it comes to online work, it needs dedication and a proper exercise of attitude.
So my name is, is Michael Oliver de la Pena. I'm the Vice President for Operations for Cytel's North Luzon region. I am Brent Shua from Bacolod City, a game developer, startup founder, and a technopreneur. I am Franch Maverick Lorilla. I'm from Davao City, and I am a startup founder. I am Nilin Baterna from Capatagan Lanao del Norte. I was an online freelancer, and now I am a digital entrepreneur. Wherever you are in the Philippines, there is an opportunity waiting for you. Next Wave Cities. Stepping up the value chain. Seed PH. Rural Impact Sourcing. And the Department of Information and Communications Technology continues to strive to build more bridges, generate better options, and connect you to the endless possibilities in the world of ICT. Digital PH. Digital opportunities for everyone. Digital PH, enabling digital opportunities for Filipinos. Next Wave Cities. Baguio City is one of the prime locations for IT BPM industry with its constant recognition as one of the top 10 next wave cities in the Philippines since 2011 and one of the top 100 outsourcing destinations globally as recognized by Tholons, the leading strategic advisory firm for global outsourcing research. My name is, is Michael Oliver de la Pena. I'm the Vice President for Operations for Cytel's North Luzon region. I've been working for Cytel for going on 12 years now. I started out in, in 2004 as an agent for the very first account. So I moved through coach track training, then became a coach, operations manager uh, track training, then I became a manager, all the way to where I am now. Back in 2003, going into 2004, when I started with the company, our plans were to, to migrate to, to the U.S. So my sister-in-law has a nursing home there. But I've always said I wanted my, my kids to grow up in the same city where I grew up in. Besides, yeah, this company has given me the opportunity to do just that. Knowing that for every one BPO employee uh, uh, or associate, that there are seven others, uh, either family or friends, that are helped by that, it's even more rewarding than the physical or, or material stuff. The Next Wave Cities program focuses on the creation and development of ICT hubs which will serve as business and innovation centers and investment destinations outside Metro Manila, thus creating economic opportunities in these areas. Stepping up the value chain. The developments in the game industry evidently shows the growing wider appreciation and interest of students and professionals in games development. I took game design and development in abroad. It's in Full Sail University. After I graduated, it was quite hard for me to get a job. Shortly after that, I went back home to the Philippines. So I worked as a contract engineer for a group of companies. Shortly after that, I dedicated some of those time to teach game design and development in our local university here. As a role model, having the opportunity of getting educated from these schools that focuses on games and development, what I can do is share my knowledge, continue teaching these uh, next generation of people who will be driving our economy here in the Philippines. If they could take advantage of those computer skills, they could apply it to their work, bring in more dollars, basically, to the uh, Philippines, our country. The Stepping Up the Value Chain initiative aims to develop the higher value and more complex services capabilities that the country's IT BPM segments could offer. These segments are information technology, healthcare information management, software development, finance and accounting, 
animation and games development. Seed pH Seed pH involves activities to develop startup ideas, skills, and mindset as it conducts different activities to orient the youth on the opportunities to position Philippines as a leading digital economy. I'm French Maverick Lorilla. I'm from Davao City. I just graduated from the University of Southeastern Philippines, taking Bachelor of Science in Electronics Engineering. Right now, we're building a startup called Cloud Farm Innovations. Cloud Farm Innovation is a company that aims to help our Filipino farmers to simplify their lives in agriculture through technology. We see potential in agriculture, and that is why we put our interests, our skills and talent to do such a thing that could help farmers to maximize their yield. Right now, our company is developing a product which is a smart IoT sensor and app that allows farmers to maximize their yield through advanced monitoring and analytics of the crop condition. What inspires us to make this startup is we all came from family of farmers and we see a lot of opportunity in agriculture and there's a lot of problems needed to be solved. That is why we build this technology that will help farmers make a smarter decision in farming by giving them the information that they need through the use of an app and a device that is put on the farm. CPH promotes digital entrepreneurship and advocates the development of the country's startup ecosystem by unifying its players and stakeholders towards the community's common goals. Rural Impact Sourcing RIS program also involves training and development of talents in the countryside to enable them to provide IT BPM services while working from home. I am Lee Baterna from Kabatagan Land of the Norte, an online worker. I started online work in the year 2007. I po ako for college sa Iligan Institute of Technology. Po. Yung papa ko po, farmer po siya. Yun po bumubuhay sa amin. Natuto akong mag-ani po ng palay, tapos magtanim din. Tumutulong sa paglagay ng mga similya po ng palay po. Uso pa yun yung Friendster. Yun lang yung pinakamalakas na social media site noon. So dun po nagsimula ang lahat. Isa pong employer ang gustong mag-hire sa akin. I started as a data entry personnel for pnworldwide.com. Yung salary ko po noon is 16,000 po pesos. Malaking tulong po yun sa pamilya ko kasi pag magbibigay ako ng pera sa mama ko, sa papa, para din sa palaya namin. Now, I am the owner of Kapatagan Web Services. Pwede palang gawin dito sa rural with the help sa inyong program po. Kaya yun, nagpusigi po kami with the help of our mayor na ipuso mag magkaroon ng homegrown BPO dito. Yung mainly in-offer po namin is web developing, social media marketing, uh, lead generation, search engine optimization, both on-page and off-page. Gumagawa rin po kami ng plug-in developing po ngayon. Meron na po akong natulungan ng mga local online worker dito sa kapatagan po. Train po sila para maging social media marketer as a start and then naging search engine optimizer din po sila by my guidance po. Yung basic skills po na kailangan magsimula sa online work is meron kang social media presence sa yung sarili, knowledge in computer, and tech savvy, and also an internet researcher. At least po, high school graduate po. Pwede na po siya. Marami po kaming mga kliyente. Kami po ang nagmamarket ng mga services nila. Malaki po na itulong itong online work na rural impact sourcing. Dito sa Kapatagan, malit lang po yung wage o salary. Yung sa online work po, malaki po siya. It's range 8,000 to 50,000 po. Malaki po itong tulong sa isang tao o sa isang worker na nandito.
Twitter, nag-apply ko for Facebook Ads Manager. So, luckily, na-hire na sad ko, pero this time, na-hire ko as YouTube Manager, like, mo, um, YouTube Account Manager. So, never sad ko naka-experience ani nga. Like, wala ako'y knowledge about this type of work. And... Bisag, um, even though I did not have any experience, my uh, the boss um, hired me and put his uh, faith on me. So um, when you uh, when you apply online, kanang it does kanabang do not doubt yourself because you will have a lot of teachers. And one of your teacher would be YouTube. And there are a lot of tutorials you could find in YouTube. So um, from that, um nagko anako ang um kay mga sa uh online job, online freelancing, online work. Tomorrow is never promised. Like pwede ka tomorrow wala na work. Pero what uh, what is good is that there are a lot of opportunities online. Like you can work, you can find a job. Like for example, you lost your job today, you will have another job tomorrow. So th- it depends on how much you um how much you uh you want na. Uh, how much you want to like really get a job so you have to present yourself well so during the interview you have to you have to be confident with your skills like um there's a friend an online friend uh an online freelancer friend of mine that told me um you have uh you have to fake it till you make it <laughs> so like not necessarily you will like um for sure like or like pretend that you graduated blah 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 but you um ang gipasabot ato is like if someone if if the interviewee will ask you an interviewer will ask you that do you know how to um do so- social media marketing so if you have an idea on how to do it you will you will tell the person that yes i have an idea of uh social media marketing and because eventually they will give you training they will teach you what uh they will teach you um the flow of the 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 process of the job and if ever you have questions if ever you have like um if there's something that you don't know and you can always just search online um, how to do it. Like what I did, like for example, with Google Ads. I don't know anything about Google Ads. I did not have training with Google Ads. But my boss, my boss wanted me to do a, a Google Ad. So what I did, YouTube. <laughs> so search. You have to search uh, Google Ads tutorials. Like 2020. So everything is there. All you have to do is um, absorb the knowledge that you find online or all the knowledge that every training um, has given you. And then be confident and it will show. It will show the, the bosses will see your confidence and they will eventually trust you. So they will hire you. So um my tips would be um if you want to work online, you have to be confident in yourself. Never get discouraged if you are not like you sent out like 10 applications that day and no one responded to your application. Do not get discouraged because for, uh, what who knows that after 3 days there will be a response. After a week, there will be a response. So what you will do is with onlinejobs.ph, there is a limit of 10 applications per day. 
So what you will do is send out like all 10 applications per day. Like every day you send out until you get hired. And then uh, learn new skills through watching YouTube tutorials or reading blog posts or uh, attending trainings. Um, uh, it is best if you would uh, be uh, a scholar for the DICT, DJT uh, training. So they have different kinds of training. They offer different kinds of training. And, and when you start, when you start earning something online, you have to, you have to save up money. You have to pay for your own field health. Um, there are some jobs that would um, provide uh, field health, but um, maybe they would say that uh, at least six months, you would be with them at least six months. So prior to that, you can, or you, uh, you can just pay it yourself. Like if, if the company doesn't provide uh, HMO, then you have to pay it yourself. You have to get SSS. You have to get life insurance. Why? Because to prepare for the future. Like, why are you working if you only live for like today, right? So you always have to save up. Prepare for prepare an emergency fund because you'll never know when you will get sick. So, uh, dapat na anja siya sa inyong budget. And and once uh, and the uh, software that I wanted you to like really study or like learn is Asana. You have to learn how to use Asana, Trello, or Monday.com. Uh, pariho lang na sila tulo. Uh, na siya kanang na siya mga software, kwa na siya, work scheduling, like sa inyong task. Usually, um, sa mga online jobs, na sila yung mga Trello board, Asana, Asana, Monday.com, like dito ni mo makita yung mga task. So, i-assign na siya sa inyong ha, so naan na siya priority, makita ni mo na yung priority, kung sa inyong dapat unahon, kaya na. So, uh, i-learn lang kung saan na siya paggamit, kung sa pag-navigate, Another one is Hootsuite and Postfiti. Kaning duha mo ora ni ako nagamit so far. Kani siya nga mga kani siya nga um, software or kani online lang ni siya ha. Kani siya is kanang sa social media marketing ni siya. Like okay, imong boss ikaw ga handle ka og social social media marketing. So kani siya nga mga nga Kani Hootsuite and Postfiti, it will allow you to schedule schedule posts. So you will create like um, a post for 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 a week. So um, for Monday to Sunday, na na kind of prepare nga post, you will schedule it through Hootsuite or Postfiti para magdungan sila og post sa different na social media platforms like um, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter. So magdunga na na sila bahalag dili na ka mo atubang sa computer ana mo post na siya giya ha. Another one is Canva. So kaning Canva mura ni siyag um yang purpose is mura siyag Photoshop na very easy. Like sa Photoshop man god is um pwede ka liba mag-create or sa Illustrator pwede ka mag-create og tarpaulin may inana, di ba? Or mga posters. In Canva, drag and drop lang yun siya. Like, you have all the free photos. You have all the um, backgrounds, presets that you can use to create like a very um, engaging post to be used sa imuhang mga post sa Instagram, sa imuhang Facebook, inana. So, um, I am very, very thankful that um, naka naka appeal ko aning uh, DJT uh, web de web development course sa ngagi offer sa DICT. It's because 
the region nag-start ang ako ang online career. Like, na-kickstart yun akong online career. So, I'm, I am very, very thankful. And, so, ako lang yung ma... ma my advice sa inyo ha is to look out for any uh, upcoming um courses i i think i know that there will be um different trainings but i'm not sure we um kay na postpone na gud ang uban so maybe next year tungod na ni covid so um lantaw lantaw lang mo sa po sa the ICT in order for you to like um kick start your career also pero um, if you are really confident with yourself, like you can get um, knowledge through like watching YouTube, you can really, really um, start right now. So, maolang nasa ako makashare today. So, if you have any questions, um, please drop your questions sa chat box so that I can answer all your queries. And thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. This be your resource speaker. Yes, Miss Jewel, we actually have a couple of um, questions here. Yes, sir. So here is one. Um, one question is, what are the challenges in online freelancing? So based on my experience, the challenges would be like, there are a lot of um, job posts that requires um, experience, but and but I have also experienced that um, I tried applying to that job post and then I got in. So it really depends on how much on how you present yourself, because if you are like if you are really confident and you can assure your assure that person that you can do the job well you can you are a fast learner they will uh, put your, their trust on you so maybe that's one of the challenges and also like not um making sure if it's not a scam <laughs> because um unfortunately there are people by people who take advantage of our skills so my tip would be that before you send out an application, before you accept a, a job, you have to do a background check also. Like, you have to make sure that it's not a scam, it's a real person, um, it's legit. You have to check if it's legit. So, yeah, that's, I think that's the two of the challenges I, I think, um, I've experienced or like based on my experience. All right, thank you, Miss Jewel. We actually have um, a couple of questions. <laughs> I hope okay. you are still open. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So another question is, what um greatest what greatest advice can you give for a budding freelancer who just started his or her career? The greatest advice now. <laughs> so as what I have said, just be confident in yourself. Do not limit yourself with whatever um, basic information or learning that you have. You have to do research all that time so that you will be updated with all the uh, uh, with all uh, with the skills that you will have. So everything, actually, everything is there in the internet. You just have to look it up. So I mm -hmm. think that would be my greatest um, advice. Do not limit yourself. Learn. Research. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Jules. So we have um, questions coming in. For those who still have questions, um, let us maximize the time that Ms. Jules is here to actually give advice and guide us uh, for those who want to uh, enter the freelancing uh, community. So we have a couple of questions coming in both in our um, Google Meet and our Facebook Live. So here's another question, Ms. Jewel. I hope you're still okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. How is, ano daw, how is freelancing in this pandemic? Actually, it's really, really helpful because during the pandemic, we were not affected with the 
um, unlike those who are working um, in offices, something like that. So some lost their jobs and some has to like, uh, like depend on help, uh, government help. So with us freelancers, um, even though it's pandemic, we still have, we still have income coming in. So our family is not um, having a problem with so, uh, having something to eat or or buy or paying the bills. So, mm. yeah. So I think um, the freelancing, um, uh, being a freelancer or like working online is really uh, a good, um, a great advantage during this. A pandemic. Mm -hmm. So it is um, really an, a good alternative. Yes, yes. All right. So speaking of advantage, um, Miss Jewel, we have a question here in Meet from Maxi. Mm -hmm. What are the advantages and disadvantages of freelancing? So maybe he wants um, some um, pros and cons of freelancing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Miss Jewel. So the advantage would be. Um, like for example, uh, during a pandemic, you still have work, and you don't need, you don't have to spend, like even if not in the pandemic, you don't have to spend money for transportation. Like, you can work at the comfort of your home. Pwede ka like pag mata ni mo, time na dey sa trabaho, pwede ka mo lingko dayon. Di nakakailangan like maligo, mo present, mo be presentable. So that. Uh, in that way, makasave ka og money sa imuhang transportation. And you could also be like, for example, if you're a parent like me, you can also be like a full-time um, full time mom and at the same time, nag full-time sad ka og work. So for me, that, that are uh, uh, the advantages of working online. So the disadvantages would be like... Um, Pwede ka, like, you don't, pwede ka tomorrow wala na work. Something like that. Like, you, um, dili ka maka-expect nga, 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 mo long term. Pero there are, don't be discouraged ha, because there are long term jobs in online. So, depende lang na sa'yo mo makita nga trabaho. So, if, muto siya kung ingon ka ganiha nga, do not be discouraged. Kay, if mawalaan kag trabaho ka ron, pwede ka tomorrow na nakilaing trabaho. So another one is, um, so online contribu uh, contribution like SSS Feel Health. Um, sometimes they wala ka provide ang companies ana, so you have to um, pay it yourself para sa imuha pong security. And another disadvantage would be um, kanang uh, I have it in my mind. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, kanang siguro dili siya ma-counted as experience when you apply sa government in an as um, but I think they are starting to work it out like pwede siya ni mong ma, ma pwede siya ma-counted as experience so, kay mo usad na ako ang ako ang challenge ako uh, karon na nga what if I decided to work uh, to choose uh, like a different career path like would my online freelancing would be it would be counted as an experience so i think the government is like trying to work it out right now since the ict is um very uh, strong in promoting uh, like alternative uh, kind of source of income like online jobs uh something like that so and um also one of the disadvantages if you are not um kanang wala ka na anad og EST PST nga time zone um it would be like a really great uh kanang adjust pag adjust sa imo ha so but eventually ma okay ra ka ana ma anad na ka sa imo hang like gabi nga time nga like Like, parihan na mo nga, 
nga pila na jud ka like almost a year na mi nga ga work og EST or PST nga time zone. So amo ang buntag gabi uh, na nasa amo ang live na mga hours na nasa gabi eh, among sleeping time sa buntag. So usa sad nga uh, disadvantage would be like um the toll in your body since unless unless ha, if you if you would be able to sleep in a quiet area uh, because my challenge is when i go to sleep and there are a lot of people awake na so the, the noise is like i could hear some of the noise so ma disturb ako ang sleep usahay but i'm still energetic like siguro naka-adjust na sa akong body so i think mao na siya ang ako ang ma-share nga advantage and disadvantage of freelancing mm. so in terms of time management put miss jul no i think that's also a concern i yeah. believe you just um you just came from work tama ba yes so you still Hello. have no uh, sleep mm -hmm. so thank you for sharing your time miss jul no to our yeah I, i will always make time for the to, for the ict for the... all right mm -hmm. but we still have a questions can you see mm -hmm. time miss jul is it okay yes no, no problem no problem you lubos lubosin na namo ang time <laughs> Uh, na ka. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right, so here's the question, Ms. Jul. Um, I applied for more than 10 applications, but there is no feedback from any of them. What could be wrong now, Ms. Jul? Maybe you have to improve your cover letter because it is really important to, to have a very good cover letter and also a very good um, resume or a CV. Because um, the cover letter, my God, like when you send out an application, it is the first thing that the employer would see. So if they if they see your cover letter na not well written all over the place, ma discourage sila. So like, dili ka nila ma, wala ka ma, dili ka ma shortlist. So you have to make your cover letter very nice, like. Murag ib ib ano jud mo like kana jud mo hang first impression ang imo hang cover letter. Mm, so even in online freelancing, there is um, cover letters that I mm, yes. So in ano siya when you check out online jobs at ph, um na ayo na siya like when you when you click on apply uh, apply to this job post, makita ni mo tong ilahang um area for a uh, letter for a cover letter so kailangan chada gid imong cover letter kay mo man na ilahang first view na mabasahan right. so kailangan mas makita nila imo ibutang diha ang imong skills unsa imong nga nabal-an imong like unsa nga mga tools imong nabal-an like for example katong quick pang sulti ganiha like Asana, Hootsuite, Trello, Canva, kana siya mga importante sa nga mga tools when you work online. So, tunan sa ninyo para mabutang niyo dito sa inyong cover letter na naamoy uh, na uh, knowledge about ana nga mga tools. All right. So, Ms. Jule, um, there are a couple of questions here asking, is formal education needed to be a freelancer? Do you have to be a graduate of a bachelor's degree? No, you don't have to be like a graduate of a bachelor's degree to become an online free freelancer. Actually, we can work on as an online freelancer even if you are a high school dropout. And because what matters most is the skills. So it doesn't matter if you are um if you are a magna cum laude, but you do, you do not what if like for example you are, you are a magna cum laude but you do not know how to how to like use the tools that i have mentioned earlier you don't know how to um you are not very proficient in using the internet or the computer you won't you won't be hired so if you are really like if you are a high school dropout and then you have a lot of skills like you are good in graphics design you are good in 
social media management. You can work as an online freelancer. Actually, there was there was a graduate, um, Sir Joshua Wright, um, who is who is now a graphics designer, a graphic artist for a book. Yes, yes. You actually have a lot, Miss Julia. You have yeah, a yeah. lot of testimonies. Later on during my presentation, I could actually mm. open it. Yeah, um, you will learn. Uh, you will know ab more about those people who did not have a college degree, but through training, through um, I think training, um, nakalearn sila ng skills, and then mo sa na mo na ang rason nga na hire sila. It's not the educational background at all. All right, but I think it is um, a plus factor, Siguro. Yeah, I yeah I think it is a plus, but it is not. It is not required. Required. Right? Mm -hmm. The skill is a uh, skills is more important. All right. So, Miss Jewel, what kind of laptop or desktop, or what should be the specs now, of mm -hmm. equipment that should be used for an effective online freelancing? So I would suggest the minimum specs would be like an i3 or Ryzen 3 computer with graphics um, graphics card so but if you will do like heavy editing heavy um, graphics kanang mag video editing mo rendering you have to uh, buy something higher like i5 or Ryzen 5 and then a very very good graphics card so the mini but the minimum requirement for like uh, um, social media marketing or web design, like for example, Word just WordPress, you can use an i3 computer. All right. Here is another question from me, uh, Miss Jewel. Actually, um, this is from Axel. I think we have obvious answers here, but um, we want it to come from you. Who hires freelancers? That's the question. So, um, these are people uh, usually. So, uh, based on my experience, um, there are um, a foreigners who outsource here in our country, the Philippines. So, like for example, um, there are uh, companies or offices that would want to hire someone who will handle their email, something like that. They would outsource to um, hiring Filipinos. So, so usually, ang hire is ang kanang uh, sa akong experience, ang nag-hire directly is ang katong boss kid mismo. Some are HR sa kanang company. And there are also agencies actually. So, like, na, um, na uh, group of Filipinos na nag-create, na, na, nag sila mismo ang nag-look og freelancers na Filipino side. And then, balis, na ay middleman ba? Na ay middleman. So, nasa yung na, actually, nice po na siya nga, nga way nga kanang na emurag middleman. It's because, um, bisag mawala na siya nga client, pwede mo tagaan ug laing client, anak nga agency. So, pwede yung saga mag-direct o magpa-direct o hire. Alright, so, ano da yung miss, um, Jewel, there are also local clients and there are international mm. clients. So we also have Filipino clients. Tamaba. Yes. Mm -hmm. Freelancing. All right. I think we are down to our one last question, Miss Jul, no? Mm -hmm. And the question is, um, what if there is no connection or there is no electricity? Electricity. What happens now? Oh. So some companies requires you to have a backup power. For example, um, you, uh, you are working on your desktop. So some companies would require you to have a, a laptop ready with a um, battery and then a packet data, katong Wi-Fi gani. So some uh, companies would require you to have one. Mm -hmm. And, but based on my experience, um, if the company, if, if I will experience a power outage, um, I would just inform my boss that uh, we are ex currently experiencing a power update uh, outage. So, um, I think they are very just con very considerate. But what if your work will be like calls? So, I I've noticed that the most um, like the required of power 
nga back up is katong nga calls. Sa mga outbound calls, uh, real estate. Kaya na sila nga na magsigi o tawag. Mauna siya ang mga trabaho nga ga required yun ang mga back up. Nga mga power. So, sometimes po, uh, if kailangan yun ka, if dili ka pwede nga i-excuse sa trabaho kay na uh, kay brown out. Pwede ka... Um, atuog ka ng, og, dili lang siya, o localize lang halik sa inyong area ang na-brown out. Pwede ka mo atuog mga computer shops nga na ay kuryente, na ay internet. So, you can do that. Else, you have to like really explain the situation like you have, na, nitawag na ka sa uh, like for example sa Noreco, nitawag na ka sa Noreco nga koan uh, there uh, ka nang nag gina fix na nila ang problem and the power will be on our back in a little while so uh, some of the bosses are very considerate also mm, so there we have um, clients who are actually understanding yeah <laughs> luckily uh, uh, my clients are very very understanding like um, um some clients would um deduct the the hour say mong pay if how many hours nga wala kay kuryente some some clients would deduct um they will not pay you for that hours so uh it happened to me that if na power outage wala koy choice wala koy wala koy back up so katong nga mga times na wala koy power wala sad wala sad koy pay okay you are paid per hour man so kung wala ka nagtrabaho ana nga oras wala sad kay bayad but mm. I believe there are also um, online jobs, um, Miss Jewel, no, nga, kana ganing na, nag employ of flexible working hours mm. or flexible time, no, nga, even if it is brown out, pag balik na lang sa korente mo, balik ug work, tama ba? Mm -hmm. Sige. Yes, pwede lang, like, um, madungra ko. Yes, yes. Uh, Nasay trabaho ngayon, Ana, like, for example, kani akong work karon sa intuitionology. Um, well, actually, uh, I don't have a specific time when kumo time in, when kumo clock out. Um, so sometimes mo uh, mo time in ko alas ocho, sometimes ten thirty, eleven thirty pag katulugon pa ko. <laughs> so pero mo mo out ko do guys sad kay para makuha asad na ko ang like ang forty hours per week nga target na ko nga ta, nga time. So um na asay uh, kanang na ay mga mga company nga or na ay mga clients nga ganahan sila like kailangan mo mo trabaho ka from 1 am and na jud time in kag 1 am na, na ay ubang clients nga pag gusto lang ka og kanus aka mo mo time in as long as you got the job done mm -hmm. okay i think um that's one of the perks no of online mm -hmm. Thing. Uh -oh. okay, mm -hmm. so regular work pa if um ni late ka og in dili na nimo mabawi like ma, ma late ka og 30 minutes masulod ka work mm -hmm. 8:30 dili makaka extend until 5:30 para complete imo true <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah kailangan jud nimo ma makuha na gyud nimo maapas ang nimo ang time nga na miss nimo like for example karon sa kong trabaho so mo mo in ko og 9 nya what if pagka 2 or 3 a.m. gutumon ko? So, manggawas me, mananghid lang ko nga, sir, I will take a break. Pero kanang break na ko, wala na siya pay. <laughs> Kay, morag, mora sa namo ang uh, agreement. Uh, so, pwede ko mo balik after 2 hours, after 3 hours. So, ina na, or after 30 minutes. Basta i-count lang namo ang time. Kung kano sa ako ni in, ni out, ni break, then ni balik ko in, and out pagka end of the day. So, mo lang sad na ang chada sa online. Dili pareha sa uban nga fix ang imuhang daily rate. Per hour siya, guys, na dollars. So, uh, kung i-convert ni mo na siya dili sa Philippine money, um, higher gud ang pay compared o nag-work ka o um, of offices or government offices. So, mo sad na ako ang gi-advise nga nga unlike magod o Presa na teacher ka. Teacher ka sa government, sa DepEd. Pwede man siya ni mga forever na na ni mga trabaho, di ba? 
kuman sa makasulod ka forever na magina ni mo unless og muundang kag trabaho as teacher. So pag mahuman ka og trabaho mo retire ka na kay dawaton nga ng mga pension ana ana. So sa, kung kita mag online ta, mag uh, freelancer ta, kita ang maningkamot na maatay contribution. So mo na siya kung inaingon nga dako og pay and dapat mag save ka kay di good um you have to have an emergency fund. Kay di delivery para sa uban na makadali dali og pang loan ina na ana kay lahi man ang mga papers so like wala tay ka present nga papers as proof ba unlike sa uban nga ga work sa government kung kuan nga na ay nga pwede sila makapang loan ina na so dako ang pay sa online pero dapat mag save sad ka prepare for an emergency prepare for whatever like educational nimo tanan so kuha kag mga insurance life insurance daghan diha mga sa AXA uh, Sun Life Pro Life UK kuha i grab nimo na sila nga opportunity opportunity mintras bata pa so mungo na ako ah <laughs> karon speaking of which miss Juno there is actually a question from Trisha how much do you earn daw from freelancing i think you have already um answered that no it's i think a lot higher compared to um Mm -hmm. The regular work, tama ba? Do you just arrange na siguro daw or a clue um, or a hint? Oh. Uh, to be honest, nag-start ko sa online free, uh, ako ang pay is $2 per hour. As in like, nag-start ko like $2 per hour. Pero um, na-promote, na-promote, so na-increasean sa nila ako ang hourly rate. So, kung beginner ka, kung beginner ka, like, Bag-o juga nagsugod sa online freelancing na ay ang minimum siguro karon mo ay $3 per hour. So magkadugay magkadugay ka sa online freelancing, magkataas imong experience sa pag-work online, magkataas sa na imong rate. So na ay nag $4, $5 ang uban gani tag $15. Depende sa trabaho. So kung programmer ka, kabalo ka mang mag-coding, kabalo ka og kanang dili ng WordPress ha katong mga hard coding hard code. So kato mas higher gud ang mga pay ato nila. Na basta nga $15 pataas inana. Yeah, CSS HTML. So kung kabalo ka og hard coding gud mas higher og pay. So pili-pili lang mo kay daghan man na kaayo job posting nga uh, uh, ipakita man na nila daan nga sa ilahang post na uh, we are looking for for example email hunter uh, $3 per hour 40 hours per week so inana so uh, tapos magkadugay magka-increase sa puna nila sila like uh, kanisa ko ang boss karon kay um kaning sa intuitionology Canadian ni siya nga boss pod, uh, pod, uh, podcaster po ni siya um I told him na ko ayan ka nang uh, dugay-dugay na mangu ko sayha ay pero di gid tantong dugay like 3 months inana. So he ano kay kanang palangga ko sa kong boss because um nag-share lang ko nga nga ni kuha ko life insurance kay para sa kanang bitang sa akong future kay ganahan ko na i retirement blah blah blah. So siya ni offer siya nga siya na lay mo pay sa monthly na ko nga contribution sa akong insurance. So, paswerte ay na good o ka ng client na makuha. Na ay client good nga ka ng generous. Na ay client nga ka ng kung say, gisabutan sa sugod, maura good na siya. Na ay client na ka ng kusug kayo muhatag o mga bonuses bitaw, like uh, Christmas bonus. Na yun, na ay sa high client na bisag wala, wala kayo one month. Kay happy siya sa imong performance. Maayo ka sa Maayo ka sa imong trabaho, increase na ka og 12 uh, per hour ni mo. So, imbes like $4, sige, imo na niya $5 per hour. So, inanan na siya sa freelancing. So, dili ko din nga magpareho. Alright, speaking of pay, uh, Miss Jewel, on sa wana ka ng pagbayad, Anna? I mean, pagbayad sa clients going to you. What is the um, method? Mm. So, ang pay, usually, uh, gabayad ang client through PayPal or Pioneer. So, kana, kana, so far, kana pang duha akong na-experience nga 
or transfer wise kana sila pero ang kalabanan yun sa ako a ah, is PayPal sa PayPal yung ko ginabayran so although ang conversion sa PayPal is not kanang pariha o conversion sa sa kanang sa banks I guess mas lower ang um, sa PayPal ng conversion sa dollar pero dako uh, ragi hapon ang ang ikong compare ko yeah yeah dako ragi hapon compared sa ko an daily imo hang rate sa work all right I think I'm just checking Miss Jula if we still have questions in Facebook hmm. Live I think and um, also the answer kanang yeah, sa PayPal sure. kanang kung mo apply mo ano ha kanang mo apply mo online jobs of course imo imo hang real name gud imo gamiton so mo gamit ka sa imo kung mo gama ka ng mga PayPal account unsa nga mga account diha like sa Payoneer you have to use your real identity kay um magka problem niya mo later on like for example naka start na kag receive og money magsigi kag receive og money niya fake kanang ang imuhang uh, imuhang details nga imong gibutang sa imong PayPal account dili imuhang real name dili imuhang uh, tinuod nga details pag moabot ang time nga ang PayPal mangayo og proof of identity og proof of address di na jud na nimo ma correct di, di na gud nimo makuha imong kwarta so it happened to us nga kailangan uh, murag siguro pag makuha na sa PayPal mabantayan nila nga nag daga na nagsulod nagsulod so pangayuan kanila og proof of uh, identity og proof of address so para sa mo ang sa mo ang part among gi present ato is among passport og barangay clearance so mo na siya importante jud nga inyo ha gyud like real accounts gyud inyo ha gamiton ayo na mga uh, gama-gama lang kay maglisod niya mo kay bas what if wala niyo gina save save niyo mga kwarta dito na abot nag 100,000 ka pin nya moabot ang time nga si PayPal mga ayo nag proof oh, di na niyo makuha niyo mga kwarta <laughs> hilak na lang <laughs> hilak na lang <laughs> kaluoy pod tawon sige so oh. that's a good advice no use your hmm. real identity when you uh, enroll or you um, open an account sa PayPal mm -hmm. right Ngayon yeah, sa mga ganyan na siya pag, ano, pag cash out Miss Jewel from PayPal, like, um, ilink um, ka sa, sa bank account, tama ba? Uh, Then, yes, uh, pwede ka mo, uh, mo cash out through kanang direct ni mo siya i-withdraw sa imuhang bank account. Pwede sa ni mo i-agi o Gcash. So, ang Payoneer o PayPal na na sila sa Gcash ka ron. So, ilink rin ni mo imuhang PayPal o Payoneer, or Payoneer sa um, Gcash account ninyo. Dayon mo cash in na mo ana pag cash in niyo uh, na naman sa nasa GCash nga kanang bank transfer so i pag bank transfer niyo ana na ana siya fee nga 15 pesos karon so direct mm -hmm. like, real time pag pag pag, tra, pag transact niyo mo appear dai na ang so like na dayon, uh. ang money na ana na dayon sa inyo hang ATM uh, all right so, I think we don't have um, questions anymore. Nahurot na, <laughs> Miss Jewel. Pwede ba daw ko na pay Maya? Uh, sige, na, sige. Uh, wala ko ka try og pay Maya, pero na ako'y kailang uh, sa pay Maya siya ga... ga transact. Uh, uh, ga transact. Uh, uh, pero wala ko ka try og pay Maya. Sa Gcash, good ko for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we don't have questions. I, I'll check Facebook Live, uh, Miss Jewel. I think we don't have na... So, mm -hmm. any final words um, to our listeners, especially those who want to uh, start a career in online freelancing? Unsa man mga masulti, Miss Jul? So, salig lang dito mo sa inyong mga kaugalingon. Like, take advantage of the free materials you can find online. Um, muna siya, be confident, take advantage of the uh, knowledge that are available available online. Watch out for trainings na i-provide sa DACT or kanang um, sometimes naman sa mga training, uh, paid trainings online but I don't recommend. So, unless you want to spend thousands of pesos. Pero, of course, kita dito ta sa free ng mga training. So, um, aside sa ad, uh, sa, sa ad Anna, uh, if you really want to start your online uh, freelancing career you have to start now start now like 
ayaw unya unya o ganahan ka mag o ganahan ka makas makatrabaho online get your computer research and gamat na mga mga accounts daan sa online jobs that ph upwork pero ako inakaman ha online jobs that ph kay masayon siya masayon makakita ng trabaho dito so know your skill kung maayo mo o graphics design dito mo sa graphics design mga apply if if maayo mo o social media marketing um, focus mo sa social media marketing pero mo lagi na siya do not limit yourself kay pareha sa ko ah uh, wala ko yung idea tong ubang trabaho before pero uh, sa trabaho gi gi tudluan ko sa akong client nga unsaon inanaana nakakat-on ko so another skill na puto siya so inana lang do not limit yourself dayon be confident lang gyud sa imong kaugalingon and Sir Joshua, thank you so much for this opportunity. Nga, we invite you nimo as a speaker sa kaninga web webinar. Thank you very much, Miss Jewel. Kami mo dapat magpasalamat because you are, <laughs> di ba? We met last year in Zamboanga Tang and DJT, and look mm -hmm. where you are now, standing. You're um, a successful online freelancer. <laughs> so, <laughs> I would be for for forever grateful to the ICT good like. Like, bisag imo hong ipatawag o kanus uh, available yun ko para sa DICT. <laughs> bisag na trabaho ka, Miss Jill. Inana, inana ko ka thankful. Inana ko ka thankful sa knowledge ngayon yung na-share sa ako, ah. Uh, thank you very much, Miss Jewel. And we appreciate ano, no, nga idea and nga thought. So, mm -hmm. di ba? Um, we really hope nga dagang yun tag uh, matabangan. Especially mm -hmm. that oh, you're already um, skilled enough um, then our scholars, but now you're already freelancers of your own. So thank you very much for sharing your time. And with that, Miss Jewel, allow me to um, present to you a certificate of appreciation. So um, this certificate of appreciation is given to Julia Rosan Kabanban for sharing her time, talent, and expertise as the resource speaker during the Digital Jobs PH workshop for Negros Oriental a webinar on online freelancing conducted by the Department of Information and Communications Technology, uh, Visayas Cluster 2, on November 17, 2020. So, given this 27th day of November 2020, digitally signed by our o OIC Regional Director, Mr. Frederick Amor. So, thank you very much, Ms. Jewel, once again. For, thank you so much, but sir. For giving your time so sa ulitin sa sunod na pod oo pohon pohon ang ato ang DJT uh, tabugon dinhi sa Cebu <laughs> we will work it out all right mm -hmm. yes pohon sir thank you miss Jewel. and um this time um for our listeners i will be the one um presenting um because this has been um, always mentioned by Miss Julia a while ago, no? Because Miss Julia is actually um, a graduate of this training in Zamboanguita, Negros Oriental, last year. Um, we are so proud of her for finishing as a medalist, pagyod. Because once you um, um finish this um training with flying colors, actually you will become a medalist. So aside from being a graduate medalist, put si Miss Julia. And so today I will um. Um, tell you or I will be um, discussing a brief information or a brief discussion about this training because who knows for our listeners will be one um, of our scholars will be um, following the footsteps of our speaker one of these days okay so um, the digital jobs PH training or DJT is formerly known or formerly named as the rural impact sourcing or RIS so it was actually in 2017 when RIS program or DJT program now um, was created. So um, the ICT as a separate department no, intended for the National ICT Development Agenda um, was established in 2016. So a year after um, the DJT training so in 2017 was um, um, established. So um, it aims to promote um, ICT enable jobs as a high value economic activity in rural um, communities that are not yet ready to host IT BPM operations. 
The program involves training and development of talents in the countryside to enable them to provide um, IT BPM services while working from home. So simply put, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, um, DJT or um, training is an online freelancing training. So for those who want to know or to develop their skills or enhance their skills in online freelancing, we actually go to various locations especially in the far-flung communities or in rural areas um, to conduct this training. So if you could notice, um, Ms. Julia, our um, speaker, was actually um, a graduate of DJT Zamboanguita. So um, you might wonder why Zamboanguita, why uh, not the major cities like Dumaguete City or Cebu City ba or Tagbilaran City. It is um, for the reason nga we, um, we prioritize the rural communities. Okay, because um, we are also after no, of the improvement and of the development of um, the IT BPM industry in such area. So um, we understand that major hubs like Cebu and Dumaguete and Tagbilaran, um, they are already on the, on the main um, line of um, catering no, or hosting to IT BPM operations. But we are also... Um, we are also we also want other um, cities or towns to um, you know to um, improve and to provide opportunities for their citizens for their constituents now without having to go to Dumaguete without having to go to um, Cebu to earn in um, BP, uh, to earn um, an income in BPO so um, we want uh, you can just stay at your own homes at your own uh, towns, you don't have to leave the comfort of your homes um, to earn and to be um, a worker. So that's what we are considering. Now the priority beneficiaries of RIS are now DJT include out of school youths, um, uh, those unemployed, of course, especially Corona, na, na atay pandemic and many have lost their jobs. Many um, OFWs actually were displaced no, from their um, jobs abroad they, they they went back home forcefully because there are no jobs anymore for them we also um we our part of our beneficiaries are also underemployed um perhaps go work mono but um you don't um see full um, fulfillment in your career or you want some part-time jobs perhaps so open gap on me for underemployed we are also open for um students especially mga high school graduates no perhaps um na um kanang wala pay um enough um financial na ano na capability to study and to continue um schooling um or perhaps if these students have their free times especially we actually have some scholars no, or trainees na um they are now on their thesis na uh, subject na lang, so dagang kayag free time so they can enjoy this training. We also have PWDs for mga persons with disabilities. They're also, you are also welcome here. Diba? You don't have to, um, if you will become an, an online freelancer someday, you don't have to commute and there might be challenges in transportation. You just have to work from your home. And this is actually true, no? We actually have a graduate in Laguna. She has um, cerebral palsy, but that doesn't stop her from being um, an online uh, freelancer. So right now, he, she works as um, an online freelancer, even if um, she has cerebral palsy. So, and also senior citizens, because we believe that age is just a number. So we have, we actually have some graduates in Bayawano, nga. they are beyond 60, but right now they are um, online freelancers. So you are very much welcome here now. Unya, you might ask, nga nung beneficiaries man, or why do we call our trainees as scholars? It is because nga, um, if you if you take this course no, or, or this module um, sa commercial, um, you will actually pay around 8,000 or 10,000 pesos just to earn a certificate for this kind of training or for this kind of module. But if you um, enroll or if you um, join the training, um, we at the ICT will be the ones um, paying for your fee. We pay. Um, we have um, a resource person. We have resource persons. We have pools of um, talented and, and skillful and 
really certified online freelancers. They are our external trainers and we are the ones paying for them um, for you to join the training. So we also provide some kits. Um, we provide USB flash drives and other, um, other um, things or other stuff that will help you in your um, training. So um, that's why we call our trainees as scholars. Okay. And then um, we, we have actually already transitioned because of the pandemic, no? Um, Tinood tong isulti ni Julia kanina na there are some areas nga na-postpone because of the, of the pandemic. Supposedly, we were about to start earlier this year, but um, because of the current situation, medyo na late, most of, most of our areas, late na nagsugod, mga halfway na sa year. So we have already transitioned from the face-to-face -face before um, we go to your location, we physically go to your location to conduct the training. But this time, what we do is we have um, modified it and we have transitioned online. So magkita na lang virtually for the training, which I know is, of course, very um, um, advantageous, no? very beneficial, especially nga dilit na mong sa inyong um, balay to be trained. Um, we have already transitioned online for our trainings. Now, here are our courses that we offer. We have the comprehensive, which is um, which has MSMEs involved, or na mga partner MSMEs or medium, um, small and micro ent enterprises. No, kanagani mga businesses nga daily kaayo kana um, top of the line nga businesses. Kanang mga ginagmay lang yun because um, you as um, trainers or trainees or you as um, scholars you will be the ones creating or developing the websites of your partner MSMEs. So muna siyang atong comprehensive um, uh, training. That's digital marketing and e-commerce. That's a 12-day training. Now we also have um, a specialized um, courses. We have the basic virtual assistance. Kana mura ganig um, online um, secretaries or online executive secretaries. Um, this training is for you, kind of virtual assistance. Then we also have content writing. Um, perhaps um, um, you want to be hired as bloggers or bloggers um, or think post gani sa mga businesses online. So this um, specialized course is for you, content writing. Then we also have search engine marketing and advertising. If familiar mo SEO, no? Kanang unsaon man na um, ang imuhang business kanang ganing pag, pag uh, search sa search results sa uh, inyuhang um, sa Google, sa mga search engines, sa Google, sa Yahoo. Unsaon man pag pagawas no, nga kamumoy um, part of the um, top nga results. So, appeal na siya. Then, social media marketing and advertising. Kana, kani sikat kayo ni Karon. Um, if you want to be um, social media mar uh, managers sa mga Facebook na businesses or other social media na um, um, businesses, then this course is for you. We also have graphic design. So if ganan mo mahimong um, designers or layout artists, pohon, then this course is for, for you. We also have web development. So if you want to create um, a website using a CMS or using WordPress um, for businesses, then this um, this course is for you. Then we also have online ESL or English as secondary language. Um, mo teachers, no? English teachers online. We are, we have actually partnered with um, Five One Talk. So if you are familiar with Five One Talk, then um, we will also be providing a free training for you to become um, online English teachers. So muna siya ang atong mga courses. Now, these are actually our um, locations in Region 7 and 8 because our DICT cluster involves two, ano no, two uh, regions, Central Visayas and Eastern Visayas. So, so far, for the last three years, these are already um, the trainings that we conducted. And perhaps some of you have, um, have heard of them, and I get conduct sa inyong lugar, then... This is actually the training we conduct now. Um, before, it was known as RIS or Rural Impact Sourcing. Now, 
It is Digital Jobs PH Training or DJT. Okay. Now, these are actually our accomplishments no? um, for last year. And um, um, the current um, total income of our graduates, of our scholars, no? since they graduated in 2019 up to now, is um, 655,000 um, according to our survey. 655 ng ilang na earn, um, cumulative or tanana. Okay. So these are our accomplishments. Last year, we have um, 15 original locations plus four special locations. So we actually conducted um, to 19 locations last year with 325 um, uh, graduates. Okay, so for last year, Monisha, these are the group photos. So someday, Pohon, if um, you will be joining this training, then um, we will also have um, our group shots, but uh, virtual na no? virtual photo op na lang kay online naman ang trainings. Okay, that is for region eight. Okay, we can skip this part. Kay mga ano lang man eh, mga um, accomplishment reports, but here, um, as I have mentioned, we have um, partnered with Five One Talk. And we also conduct webinars with 5.1 Talk. We partner with them since the pandemic. And last year, we had our training here in Cebu City. So, pohon pohon someday for our people in Negros Oriental. Ako, taga-dumagete mapugko, although working here in Cebu, we might um, be conducting another um, training with 5.1 Talk diha, pohon pohon sa Dumagete or in Negros Oriental. Then last year, we also partnered with the International Labor Organization no, of the United Nations. It was an, a special all-women training uh, with soft skills training sponsored by ILO. So um, they were held in Dumaguete and in Tagbilaran so in 2019. So if you could notice, ang atong mga trainees, atong mga scholars are actually all women or all females. Okay. Then just recently this year, um, we have partnered with um, the Cooperative Development Authority and with PHCCI. Nabatay mga PHCCI members din eh. So ato ang uh, audience karon. We have actually partnered with CDA and someday we will be um, conducting um, uh, this training sa mga cooperatives and first in the line for our pilot training is ang PHCCI. So you may check someday with PHCCI if um, when ang ato ang training diha. Okay, sa ato mga members. Members sa co-op. So we have here, actually muni ang partner ni Miss Julia and also the trainer for DJT Zambongita last year. So these are actually mga testimonies, no? Mga successful testimonies. Just like this one, um, she will already be flying to China, Kanisiya, because she was hired after the training. Na pandemic lang, na COVID lang, but someday, um, she will be flying, flying to China for her exposure. Okay, so we also have from City Hall. So we actually have a lot. We have a lot of successful stories. And someday, put, um, si Miss um, Julia, actually, she was um, a graduate no, of um, DJT Zambongita. And so there are also chances that we will get you as trainers. So, si Miss Julia, we're also getting her for. Um, a province here or for a town here in Cebu um, to to be our resource person. So someday po po, no? um, if you join this training and you graduate, then we can also get you. So these are our um, targets, um, our locations for the next three years, our roadmap. And as you can see, we still have um, areas or places to be, to be identified for 2021. So if you want um, to have your um, um, your location or your town to have this kind of training, um, please message us in our Facebook page. No, you can directly message us and you can um, tell us your intent or you can um, um, tell us that you are interested, that you want to have um, a training in your area or in your location. We are open for that. We still have a lot of um, areas to be identified, especially for next year. Okay. 
Um, so currently for this year, these are the trainings that we are currently having and we will be having. So as you can see, um, we have one in Negros Oriental that is in Pamplona. And um, actually this afternoon is their graduation for their training. That is why we also have um, um, a webinar or a workshop because this is also part of um, the graduation. Uh, currently, I think it, um, the scholars or our trainees are being deliberated and they will have their graduation this afternoon there in Pamplona. And also, currently, we have our training in Lapu-Lapu City. They are on their, uh, they will be on their 10th um, day tomorrow, Wednesday. Um, this is an online training. So, we also have others lined up like Tubigon Bohol, Biloan Cebu, and Tabugon Cebu for Region 7 this year, for 2020. So, next year, um, we still have some locations to be identified. So please let us know if you want your location to be the next um, location, to be the next um, area that we will be conducting our training. So let us know in our um, Facebook page. Okay, I think that's it, ladies and gentlemen. And so, um, before we end, please um, may I ask our um, uh, DICT Provincial Officer of Negros Oriental, Engineer Aurelio Tinapay, to provide to us the closing remarks. Sir Ayi, are you there? Hi, Jos. Yes, Sir Ayi, go ahead. Yes. Uh... Okay, ra kung pan yes, pero ra ba? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Okay. okay. So first, I'd like to thank the speaker, no, of the uh, Sheila. Si Julia, sir Julia. Si Julia, okay, Miss Julia, for sharing her talents uh, on how to work uh, online uh, as a freelancer, and of course our audience uh, for sharing their time. And of course, for participating to um, make this uh, workshop a meaningful one. And of course, the tips and guidance given by our uh, our uh, uh, speaker is very important to us, no? especially the right tools on how to start as a freelancing job. And the same story when you start a business, no? of course, if you start a business, of course, you have to know the right tools. Um, you have to know the, uh, uh, you have to have a good background in order for you to start a business, to become a successful businessman or woman or an entrepreneurship. Just like also in uh, starting how to build a building, you know? if you don't have the right, if you have, uh, you have the right tools, no? How to start and build and uh, construct a building? Of course, uh, there's a greater chance for you to succeed. And so, and so with uh, this uh, freelancing job, you no, know, uh, like to advise you to have you know, to do more research on this. Do more research. Having the right tools, um, listen to uh, some free workshops. You know, Make a research on Google's YouTube for you to succeed um, for being a freelancer, uh, for doing a freelancer job, freelancing job. And this is the best opportunity for us, no? especially in this pandemic time, to earn money. Not just in this pandemic, but even without pandemic, no? this is the easiest one to earn a living for yourselves, for your family, and of course for the community. And the DICT, of course, is offering a free uh, technical trainings uh, of this uh, uh, freelancing job. You know? And right now, uh, we'll be we'll have we'll be having a ceremony, graduation ceremony, in Pamplona, Negros Oriental. We have 15 graduates in Pamplona, uh, 
I'll be going there this afternoon. Who among you in living in Pamplona, Negros Oriental? Are you all from Negros? I know, sir, we have a mixer. Uh, I, although most of them are actually from Negros Oriental, although we also have an um, audience from other parts of Central and Eastern Visayas. We, I believe we also have um, some audience for coming from Manila. Oh, good, good. It's good to know no, that we have a lot of audience. Now, for the DICT is offering free technical training. No? Uh, you can uh, watch our Facebook page, page for the uh, scheduling of our trainings. Um, and now is the best time for you to start if you are really interested in doing an online jobs. And I think I will not do uh, further uh, messages no? because uh, I'll be leaving now for uh, Pamplona. And I wish you, again, no, I'd like to thank you for coming in, especially the speaker and all of you who are here. Thank you for making this uh, workshop a meaningful one. And, uh, Good luck and have a nice day to everyone. Thank you, Sir Ayi, and um, good luck no, and congratulations sa inyong um, training sa Pamplona this afternoon. Yes, thank you very much, Yes. Thank you, Sir Ayi, and good luck and congrats. Keep safe diha sa Negros Oriental. Yes. Thank you. Giming out, giming out ako sa damagiti. <laughs> Seven months of not going home. <laughs> comments they also want to have their um, training next daw sa bais na po daw sa pabanggana asa mo maganahan nga i-conduct nato ang ato ang training diya sa negros yes we are open for that we have some we are open for suggestions yes thank you very much sir ay okay yes good luck all right so mo share lang po ko to everyone no because actually working in the ICT was able and working with the online freelancing community I I actually compiled a list of websites or job hiring sites no na you may you may actually check so kanang nakaplash karon sa screen these are actually um sites if you are if you want to um, enter the online freelancing community, these are some um, job posting websites that you can avail of. Ako na siyang gi-share or ako, karon ako na siyang gi-share sa chat um, panel or sa chat box. You can go to that link. And also, um, I also have my own channel, no? <laughs> shameless plug, but um, this can actually help you, especially getting um, featured video. Um, this is um, um, this provides the um, top 10 online job sites for Filipinos. Again, I have compiled that um, after my um, experience with the online freelancing community. So I ask um, suggestions or I ask some advice from other um, freelancers, no? Just like Miss Julia or our speaker this morning. So na compile na ako. You can go check this. Um, this YouTube channel. Okay? Now, going back to our um, to our slide. So, here is now your code of the day. Please do take note of this because once you um, once you um, go to the evaluation form link, um, there is a part there that will ask of the code of the day so please take note of this link if you want to receive a certificate for this webinar then you have to take note of this cotd or code of the day okay so please take note nga puro ano siya no puro lowercase or puro small letters so para maksubmit mo sa inyong um, evaluation uh, you have to key this in kaninga code in the part where it is asked, okay?
five seconds to uh, write this down or take a picture of this or for you to um, for you to take note of this. So five, four, three, two, and one. So with that, um, please take the post-assessment evaluation to be able to receive your digital certificate within two to three weeks. But um, please do not fret. Basig dili lang maabta ng two weeks, no? And uh, there is no quiz for this webinar, but the deadline will be 1 p.m. Uh, that's this afternoon. Sorry, that's not November 16, but November 17. So you have to go to this link. Then you have to answer some evaluation. And there is a part there that um, you have to input the code of the day. So if you are listening and you have tuned in to our webinar this morning, then you know and you will be able to input our code of the day. All right. So yes, um, there are those who are asking for the link in our chat panel. Sige, I will be um, giving you the link on chat panel. All right. Um, for if you still have, if you have questions, um, our Facebook page is open. If you have, as what I've mentioned, if you have some areas or if you want your locations to be the next um, DJT location or training location for next year, if not this year, since we already have targets for this year, um, you can message us in our page. All right? Thank you very much, everyone, and keep safe, no? especially our Kababayans in Negros Oriental and to all, to all our other um, areas from where you are right now. And thank you and bye-bye. Thank you, sir.